I'm Eliza and I'm an artist and maker from Port Lincoln on the Eyre Peninsula. I'm going to talk to you today about artist identity and how we identify ourselves as artists and how we're okay with identifying ourselves as artists. This was something that was massive for me when I started with the Art Squad. I didn't feel comfortable calling myself an artist. I'd use the term creative or if people said you're an artist I'd just say I try which was such a cop out because I was an artist, I was making art. So today in this video I'm going to explain to you how I worked through this process. Um, there's also some journaling prompts that are in the packs but also in the description below. So if you want to work through it yourself you can do that afterwards. So what is self-identity and why is it important? So self-identity is the story we tell ourselves about ourselves. And this is so important in shaping who we are because who we think we are is who we are. So the reticular activating system in our brain likes to make sure that we are right. So it will find any sort of evidence that what we think about ourselves is how we are. So if we're telling ourselves that we're crap at making art, we will remember all the times we messed up, all those little mistakes, all those pieces we weren't happy with. If we're a musician and we think, oh, all we do is write crap music, we're not happy with it, our brain is going to remember all the things we've written that we don't like and just totally ignore all the ones that just smashed it out of the park that we were so happy with that everyone loved. So the labels we give ourselves are so, so important. If we think we're an artist, we're an artist. If we think we're a musician, we're a musician. We might not be comfortable with this label that we've given ourselves, but we need to sit with it because unless we're comfortable with it, no one else is going to be comfortable with it. We need to tell people that we are an artist, that is what we do, we make art. For me, a lot of it was that I didn't feel like an artist because I wasn't a real artist in my mind. To me, a real artist was someone who had working galleries, they were making a full time living off their art, everyone knew who they were, they were making fine art and this was made worse sometimes by when I said I was an artist people would jump to the conclusion that I paint. What do you paint? And if you're not a painter, you're still an artist. But it's just the way that it's perceived by people outside of the arts community. And that's fine, but we're still artists. Why I was waiting to be successful when I was going to call myself an artist? I can't be a successful artist until I've made some art. So I had to make sure that first I was happy to call myself an artist put it out to the world, and then maybe one day it would be successful. But first, I had to be an artist. For me, this meant that I needed to frame what I was saying as I am an artist. I needed to be specific, to think about what it was that I do, and that is make art. I was also using the term I am a maker, which I'm totally happy with, but using the term I am a creative, it worked. It was true, but it was denying so much of what I did and what I was putting into the world that people didn't understand what I said when I was a creative. It could, it could be anything. So what's really important is that we're super specific with what we are, who we are, and how we tell that to people. So like I said before, this might not feel super comfortable, calling ourselves something that we don't believe we are. Just yesterday, someone said to me, oh, you're Eliza the artist, and it took all of my might to say, yep, that's me. All I wanted to say was, yeah, I suppose, or I try, or sometimes, but really, I just needed to accept it, and it felt pretty weird, <laughs> but it's super important to just make it part of your day. If someone says you're an artist, you're an artist. So we believe so many lies about ourselves all the time. We tell ourselves we're not good enough, that we aren't capable of doing something, that we don't have what it takes to be successful, that we aren't going to make it. But that's not true. We believe all these lies about ourselves. So it doesn't have to feel true to call yourself an artist. You can sit with that lie of yourself until it feels true. If you keep living with that lie, you'll convince yourself that it's real. If something feels true, we act accordingly. So if we feel that we're an artist, then we can act like an artist. We will do things that we think an artist would do. So there's an activity in the journaling prompts where you can work through what you think an artist is, 
what you think an artist does and what which of them is actually true and which of them we want to adopt to make sure we feel comfortable in calling ourselves an artist. But just because we think something makes an artist doesn't mean we need to do that. We just need to work through why we think that's important and work out if it really is important to us or if it's something we've just pulled in from God knows where and decided that that makes an artist. Whether that's we've had exhibitions in state galleries or we're selling artworks that are worth a few thousand dollars, whatever it is, it doesn't necessarily mean it's true. We're just believing it. So we need to really think about that and think about why we think it's true and who decided it was true because it might not have been us. So these things are kind of like limiting beliefs. They're negative associations that we make that might hold us back from achieving the thing that we want to achieve, which at the moment is to call ourselves an artist. So these negative limiting beliefs, they sort of just sit there subconsciously making us think that our dream isn't really going to happen or that what we want isn't a good thing to want. So it might be the common limiting belief that artists are broke or starving. No one wants to be broke or starving, so why would we call ourselves an artist if that's what we think an artist is? We might also think that artists only become famous after they die. It's a common misconception, it's part of society, but it's not necessarily the truth. Yet we believe it. Why would we want that for ourselves? Another common one is that hardly any artist become successful. This also not true, because how would we know? There's people out there making art that don't want to be successful, they just want to make art, and that's fine. There are people out there who are super successful making art, but how do they define success? They might not feel successful, we don't know. So what's important about this is to recognise those things that are perhaps holding us back, those thoughts, negative associations with the term artist, and think about if that's stopping us from what we want to do. A big one for me particularly was that idea that artists are starving. I always thought, how cool would it be to be an artist? But artists don't make money. That's not a job. I can't do that. One big way for me to overcome this was to really hunt around, look for evidence that it's not true. So like I was saying before, the, the brain's reticular activating system looks for evidence that what you're telling yourself is true. If we change what we're telling ourselves, we start seeing other evidence. As soon as you start thinking, well maybe that's not the case, you scroll through Instagram and all of a sudden you're seeing artist after artist that's super successful, they've got their own business, they're selling their artwork, they're creating work that people love, they're getting contracts, they're getting all the opportunities that you want. And they're there. And they're doing it. And it's supporting them, they're definitely not starving. So there's evidence there that those things don't have to be how it is. You tell your own story. So really think about what might be getting in your way and get out of your own way towards becoming the artist that you want to be. So a big part of calling ourselves an artist is that idea that we need to be successful before it's okay to call ourselves an artist. And that's not the case, but also something important to think about is what is success? What do we think of when we think of success? And how will we know we're successful? So we need to do the thing in order to become successful. But success can change. It's not always going to be the same thing. And for some people, it might be that they want to have their art in the State Gallery. That's fine. But the first step is, getting, is making some art. You can't put art in the gallery unless you've made some art. So make some art and put it in a smaller gallery. There's steps towards success. But what's really important is that we think about what success means to us. So for me, thinking about what success meant was important because then I could think about, well, hang on, I can't be successful until I've done something about it. So success for me as an artist meant that art could be my main income source, that I could spend time doing it, but also providing for myself and creating a life that I wanted to live. And that meant having time freedom, having the freedom to make art, but also having financial freedom to do what I wanted to do. So once I knew that, then I could think about, well, hang on, to do that, I need to first 
work out how I'm going to create my art and then show it to the world. You can't show art to the world unless you feel like you're an artist. So a big step for me in that was mindset. Think about who I am, what I want to do and how I want to be introducing myself to people. So then when someone asks me, what do you do? Oh, I'm an artist. I'm a visual artist. I'm a maker. I'm a painter. I'm an illustrator. Whatever it is that fits and feels most comfortable, that's what you want to start telling people because then you will believe it. Giving ourselves a label that we are happy with is super important because that's when we will use it. But we can't always pick one label and that can be a real challenge because then you just feel like you don't want to use any labels at all because you don't know what is appropriate. It's okay to have more than one label and that's what worked for me is that in some situations I would tell people I was an artist, in other situations I was a maker, in other situations I was a digital illustrator. Whatever was most relevant at the time. Generally artist or visual artist captured everything so I would use that in situations with people who didn't weren't familiar with my work or maybe weren't as interested in a specific part of my work. But just saying I was a visual artist, it was easy to understand, it was easy for me to say. And once I continued saying that, it began to feel true. So I am a visual artist. That's the way you want to frame what you're telling yourself. I am a this. I do this. It's okay to swap and change that word that you've chosen. So I do visual art, I do painting, I make music. It's okay to change it. It's okay for your like your passion to change. As long as in your mind you are an artist, that can become like a bit of an umbrella term. You can then decide who needs to know specifics and who doesn't. So now that we've talked about what an artist identity is and why we might have trouble connecting with it and how it can, like what it can do to change how we are and how we put ourselves out in the world and how we present ourselves, it's important to then take this and think about it in our own context because everyone's different. What worked for me might not work for you, it might not be your situation. Obviously I'm a visual artist so I don't have any experience of putting this towards someone who's working in theatre or someone who's working in music. Like it's going to be different but what you can do is just Think of it like it's good to think, to really take a look at yourself and what you want to achieve and what you want from the world, what you're putting out into the world and what you want to be in the world, which can feel super big, but it doesn't have to be. No one is going to think any less of you for saying, I'm an artist, I'm a musician, and then turning around the next day and getting a job in accounting. You can be both, and that is okay. It's completely fine. Just because we say we're something doesn't mean we have to be it all the time. So for Art Squad at Home participants, there's some journaling prompts in your packs. For anyone else watching this video afterwards, there's some journaling prompts in the description. So I want you to have a think about these, work through them, journal through them, and really think about how it relates to you. So come to these with an open mind. Think about how you want to identify yourself why you're not identifying yourself as that now, what blocks might be in your way, and what is putting those blocks in your way. Generally it's ourselves, sometimes it's helped by other people. So to come back to an example of the starving artist, it's all through society, everyone talks about this starving artist. You might go and tell someone that you're an artist and they'll make a joke about, oh, well, how do you afford to do that? Or I suppose you, you, know, you need something. We've, in ourselves, we need to work through those so then when those people come to us, we don't think anything of it because we know it's not true. So to have a go at the journaling prompts below and once you be be begin identifying yourself as an artist, you can grow as an artist. So think of it as like planting the seed, you're growing the tree, you're making yourself into the artist that you want to be. It's also okay if you do this and then a few months down the track you've kind of slipped. You've stopped calling yourself an artist, you're no longer comfortable with it, you're questioning that identity. 
it happens. I've recently gone back through this myself. Probably 18 months ago, I went through this, decided that actually I was an artist. In between then and now, there's been times when I've reverted to calling myself a creative. There's been times when I've felt that I wasn't making art, so couldn't call myself an artist. There's been times when I've felt that, yeah, maybe I am an artist. I'll start calling myself that again, only a month later, I'm back to, oh yeah, I try. I paint sometimes. Something really vague that just doesn't fit who I want to be in myself. It's also, for me, just recently, I've gone through this journey again, knowing because I wasn't making art, I didn't, I feel like I'd lost my creativity, so that means I'm not an artist. But as I start telling myself I'm an artist again, all of a sudden my creativity is back. So this is not a do it one time, forget about it, never again, for most people. We've got to continually remind ourselves that we are artists, we make art, that makes us an artist, and if we keep telling ourselves that, we'll keep making art and we'll keep being artists. So have a go at the journaling prompts and then for Art Squad at Home participants, jump in the Facebook group and we can have a chat about it.